to the point, formative, entertaining, and protecting the Second Amendment. Welcome back to Elster's Rifles and Reloading and the continuation of the PSA 6.5 Creedmoor Gen 3 AR-10 series. And we are on the last part of reloading live for this series. So if you've been following this series from the start, you're in for a real treat because we are finally dropping powder with the FX120i and seeding bullets with the Hornady match grade dies. And this has been a pretty awesome adventure so far, at least for those, especially if you're just new to reloading. And just a quick recap here in part one, we did the general overview, initial shots with some factory ammunition. And we took that brass and we started our reloading adventure with 50 total pieces of this horny brass. I saw it once, once fire uh, so far. And number two here, uh, we decapped it right out of the gate. We got it in the tumbler over here, at least for to get that brass as clean as possible for the sizing process. We got it in the Lyman Cyclone case dryer here. And then we took it out and we did some annealing with the Gen 1 Elster's do-it-yourself annealer. And we got that brass uh, lubed up and resized and back in the tumbler, dried it, and we went through brass prep on this last part using the Lyman case prep center. And we got those primers seated here. So we got the, those primers seated using the Hornady L&L press. And we are up to finally dropping powder using the FX120i and finally seeding those bullets. So this will be the last part of the live reloading adventure. And if you guys aren't familiar, I do have a very in-depth series explaining the FX120i with the autotrickler.com V3 combo unit that I got from data weighing systems. And matter of fact, if you check out my place area, I have an insanely in-depth series from getting this FX120i, unboxing it, and doing initial setup. And then I even have a section here for my actual review and my personal settings to get this to drop as fast as possible and as accurately as possible. And today we're gonna to be dropping some H4350, which is widely known and used with six millimeter and 6.5 millimeter pills. And that's exactly what we are using today. And I am going to be seeding the 142 grain hollow point boat tails, which is a 6.5 millimeter. And now this is a boat tail. So it's got a, for those that are absolutely new, this has a boat tail on the ba back and a hollow point on the front. This is a very well-known uh, match grade bullet that's used a lot in Ventress rifles, uh, F-Class, you name it. This is about as heavy as it gets, at least for an AR. And we are also gonna be dropping the Hornady ELD match bullets and 140 grain that has the ELD tip on it. And those that are not familiar, and if you're absolutely new, this has a ballistic tip on it. It also has a boat tail. It's 140 grains compared to this 142 grain uh, Sierra Match King. So that is what we are seeding today. And I just wanna make sure um, that you guys are make sure that we are live and my sound is working so let me just quick test this out see who's already jumping in the chat room so it looks like our sound is good and cam cam 413 is already rolling in the reloader room saying happy sunday todd and everyone dmc is also in the reloader room saying good afternoon everyone hitting steel ca is here yo 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 todd and wield and well armed, man. That's an awesome name. And he's saying hello. So nice to have you guys along. And I just want to make a quick uh, statement here. And I have merch apparel for Elster's rifles and reload. You name it. I got stickers, 
Uh, this is the new Elster's uh, logo here. Um, this is an example of the mug that you can get off my Teespring account. So this is the old logo. This is the new logo on there now. And just a quick skim over this, if you guys are interested, and this definitely helps support my channel, uh, you can check out my Teespring account. Check out the description box below. I have a link to my Teespring, uh, Teespring uh, apparel. And they have everything from shirts, hoodies, tank tops, long sleeve mugs, uh, leggings for those females out there. And I got other options uh, for t-shirts and hoodies with the new updated logo. So definitely check that out, especially if you want to uh, help support my channel. Um, I got everything in here from towels to t-shirts. So definitely check that out if you want to help support my channel. So Ramsey Country is in the house saying good afternoon, guys. Nice to have you guys along. And yeah, we got a lot to cover here. We got a lot of powder to drop and we got some uh, bullets to see here. So this is going to be awesome. So get ready, strap in. I hope you guys enjoy the ride. And Richie Guns <laughs> saying, I want to see Todd in those leggings. Man, I think you'd have to put down a, a pretty insane super chat for that to happen, my friend. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, let's get the show on the road here and right out of the gate, we're going to drop some powder with the FX 20 I. So let me get this, uh, Bluetooth app going here and I'm just going to disconnect you guys here so you can get you up close and personal and show you exactly what this is all about. So we're going to click the app here. And it's asking, it's disconnected, tap the scan so it can scan for the Bluetooth bore that is in the FX 20 i So we're gonna tap on this and it's scanning and it found it right out of the gate. We're gonna hit connect. And just like that, we're up and running and we could start entering in our powder drops here. And I decided to, if you guys click back into my tripod, um, I decided to show you my method to my madness. <laughs> so, um, so let me actually clip you guys back out of here. And so here's the 142 grain hollow point boat tails, and I am using H4350, probably the most uh, stable powder there is, you know, short of like Varget, H4350, two well known. Uh, powders that you can use that are very stable if you're doing low development in the middle of summer and you want that low development to stay true marginally in the winter time when it's you know damn near 20 degrees out and you're doing low development when it's 80 degrees out this is probably one of the best stable powders there are there is in regards to six millimeter and 6.5 millimeter bullets so we are dropping H4350 here, and you can see, at least on this chart, with the 142 grain hollow point boat tails, we're maxing out at 41.9. And I guess the method to my madness here, and I'll show you my card here, is in the bottom right-hand corner here, you'll see the 142 SMKs. And you can see at the top end of that powder drop, I got 41.8, which is just a smidge underneath that 41.9 maxing out and usually i could tell if a, if a bullet is going to work well that rifles bore with only three shots you know i know a lot of guys are like oh, you gotta have a five shot sh group in order to really show it's a good group me personally i only need about three shot a three shot group to really know if if, a, if that barrel is and it's barrels harmonics, I should say, is going to enjoy shooting that bullet. So what I decide to do, being that 41.9 is max, I'm going to do an increments of three starting at 40.9, 41.2, three at 41.5, and just short of max at 41.8, at least with the Sierra Match Kings that has a hollow point and a boat tail here. So those that are new to the game on the flip side of that coin when it comes to the eld match with a ballistic tip uh, let me bring up that chart here 
So you can see it here with the 140 grain uh, pill flavors. You can see at the very top here, 140 grain ELD match. We are doing H4350 and it maxes out at 41.5. So right out of the gate, I'm gonna do three at 40.5, four, three at 40.8 three at 41.1 and three at 41.4. So I guess that is the method of my madness, at least to show you this, the actual data out of the books. Now, with that said, and let me make this absolutely crystal clear for all you guys, especially those that are new. This is my data. This isn't your data. So I'm definitely telling you not to follow or duplicate this information. So your journey is your reloading journey, and this is mine. So <laughs> just to make that crystal clear. Um, so let me make sure, uh, see who else is um, rolling into the reloading room here. Let's get a drink of water. And no, I'm not going to be wearing those leggings anytime soon. But like I said, if the super chat is big enough, I, I just might do it. <laughs> so... Um, so yeah, definitely check out the description box below for my apparel and I just got this up and running and I think this logo, this new Elster's logo is pretty darn cool. So definitely check that out. So let me close that down. All right. So we went over this. I'm going to shut this down. We went over the playlist for the FX code 20i. If you're interested in getting this or you just got it, You'd be hard pressed to find a playlist that has more information than this. So let me shut this down and I'm going to bring up uh, this information here. So we got the data figured out. Um, I already marked with a black magic marker on the sides of the cases here, those different powder drops. As a matter of fact, the ones with an ELD, you'll notice at least with my info card that I got a red X here next to the 140 ELDs of the different powder drops. And you could see on the necks of all of the 40.5, 40.8, 41.1, 41.4, I got a red mark on the neck. On the other side of my tray here, those are for the SMKs. So just to make that crystal clear for some of you guys that are absolutely new. Um, now, being that I'm using ELD bullets, I am using the match grade Hornady dies. I guess I don't absolutely need to, but they do make a specific stem for ELD bullets. As a matter of fact, I was actually pleasantly surprised to find out that the specific ELD M140 grain stem came in the box. I was a little worried there because when I went there checking out their stems that they offered, that they didn't offer the 140 grain. I'm like, well, what the heck am I supposed to do? I suppose I'm, I guess I'm going to have to buy that stem online. But when I cracked this box open, and I actually have that stem already in the die, it's ready to rock and roll here, um, that that stem was already in there. Matter of fact, it came with two stems, a standard seating, seating stem. And matter of fact, I'll bring that up here. I think I got a picture of it. Uh, let me see here. And by the way, if you're first time watching this series, this is the, the PSA 6.5 Creedmoor right here that we're reloading for. And there's that specific stem. Matter of fact, it's part number 397106. And that came in this uh, box and that was awesome. Because, reason why is because these stems, they don't exactly give them away. And you really need to use these stems if you're going to reload for these ELDM match grades. Otherwise you're gonna get a distinctive ring around the bullet where the seating stem comes in contact with a secant radius or the ogive of the bullet itself. And if you don't use that specific uh, seating stem, at least with these ELDMs, you will get that distinctive ring. So right now, out of the gate, I have that spe special seating stem already loaded up in the die. And when you're getting close to seating the SMKs, I'm gonna take that seating stem out and put in the regular seating stem. So you're about to see that here pretty darn soon. 
Um, now, some other things that I'm eventually going to go over here very, very soon. And if you've been watching this series, this uh, brass has been fire forming uh, at roughly 1.553 ish, about 552. And we bumped that brass back from fire form about three thousandths of an inch. And this is the actual brass uh, out of that firearm on its first fire and it's been resized and thing is is i'm going to show you how to use a bullet comparator here too at least for a bolt action it's very very important in my opinion not so much with a semi-automatic unless you did some very high-end custom-made barrel ar that you've got very tight tolerances on the bullet jumps more times than not with an AR or even bolt actions like uh, Remington 500s, Weatherbees, they're known for massive jumps on their bullets. Uh, this will come in really handy. And this tool, if you're new to the game, is a bullet comparator. And you could use a bullet comparator here, which I'm about to show you here soon. Uh, but you can insert the bullet that you're about to reload and insert this in to your firearms chamber and you can push that bullet out so you literally for example for going to use these elds you can put this in this tool and you, it's got a little of a thumb uh, screw here and you can push this all the way in and then you insert this into the firearms chamber and you push on this rod you can see this rod pushes that bullet in and out and you can push this forward and you don't want to ram it home, but you got to put a little bit of tension on this. I usually tap it a little bit with my finger uh, until the bullet gets stuck on the rifling's lands. And then what I'll do is I'll pull this tool out more times than not. If you do it right, because like you don't want to ram it into the lands, but you want it snug enough so that it actually stays on the lands. It'll actually get stuck on the rifling's lands and you pull out this tool. And I wish I could show you this to you in person, but I can't because we're live. I can't touch a firearm during a live broadcast, but I at least show you with these pictures. And if you do this right, the bullet will get stuck on the rifling's lands. And let me blow this up. And you could actually see in this picture here that the bullet is clearly stuck on the rifling's lands. And the way to get that bullet off the rifling's lands is I usually will take a snake. So I'll take a boar snake and I'll take the end of the boar snake through the muzzle and I'll knock that bullet back off the rifling's lands. And I will insert that bullet back in, back onto my caliper. So I'll take, for example, this is a clear example of the Sierra Match Kings. I'll put that back in the tool and I will put this on my calipers, make sure it's zeroed out, and I'll put that bullet inside this tool and clamp this on this calipers and try and do this as best as possible during a live broadcast with the camera in front of me. But at least to give you an idea, say like for ex pure example, um, I pulled this tool out of the chamber and reinserted the bullet back once I knocked it off the lands with a snake and clamp it on my calipers just like this. And you can see in the picture here that that bullet is, what this tool tells you is the maximum amount of seeding depth where the secant radius, the radius of the bullet touches the lands and stops. You can't seat that bullet out any further because it's already touching the lands it's some guys that really know their stuff and you might not want to do this if you're new to the game they'll act purposely jam it into the lands but i i recommend not doing that especially if you're new because you can exponentially increase those pressures but this will tell you at least with this particular sierra match king bullet that it's having a max seating depth of 
288. Matter of fact, I wrote this on this card because you're going to see this once we get all these bullets seated using maximum magazine length, which we're about to go over here in a little bit, we can get an idea of how much these bullets are jumping. You know, this is something that's very useful with a bolt action. Uh, you can use not P mags, but more metal mags that allow you to seat those bullets out way further. Um, and you don't have to particularly do this with a semi-automatic, but I will still do it just to make sure that the bullet is not touching the rifling's land. With a semi-automatic, you definitely don't want those bullets touching the land. You definitely want some type of ju uh, bullet jump. But with a bolt action, you can definitely get away with that. Matter of fact, a lot of guys will play with bullet jumps to get the most precise ammunition. Uh, but I wanted to do this to at least give myself an idea to make sure that the bullet is not touching the lands and to give you and myself an idea of how much that bullet is jumping when that powder ignites and that bullet literally jumps out of that brass and flies through the air through the chamber's free bore and then comes in contact with the rifling's lands we'll get an idea of how much that bullet is literally jumping. And they literally call it a bullet jump if you're new to the game because that bullet literally jumps out of the brass and flies through the air, a minuscule amount. And it's very minuscule, but it is in theory flying through the air before it even touches the rifling's lands. And this tool will help you in regards to showing you how much that bullet jump is. Now. I've already done this because I can't show you this on a live broadcast because this is live and I can't touch a firearm, but at least with the SMKs, where this tool, and this is called a bullet comparator, this rides on the secant radius. So if I can back this up here, this tool rides on the ogive where the bullet's secant radius comes in contact with the rifling's lands, and that will ride right on that ogive measurement, and will give you a really precise measurement, and also will help you determine how much of a bullet jump there is. So at least with the SMKs, that measurement came up to 2.288, so I wrote that down with the SMKs. And then with the ELDs, they have a, a ballistic tip, that measurement came out to 2.282, so I wrote that down. So you're, you're going to see here eventually how much of a bullet jump this particular firearm has with this particular chamber. And each chamber is like a fire print, uh, fingerprint. They're all different. So even if you buy the exact same firearm, exact same cartridge, 6.5 Creedmoor, your measurements will definitely be different because each rifle's rifling and chamber is a slightly different and we're talking thousands of an inch now with these tools i have a straight tool which is great for bolt actions but i'm eventually going to buy the curved one too i noticed at least with an ar this can be particularly difficult especially with an ar-10 these definitely the straight ones will work with an ar-15 because the upper receiver is not so long but you can see at least in this picture here i'm trying to insert this into an, an AR-10 upper, and I'm, that thumb screw is kind of hidden. I actually have to tighten this up, and it's very hard to do that, so you might want to invest in both of them. And they'll make a curved one right here, at least for an AR, and some bolt actions too. So I think, in my opinion, it's nice to have both. As a matter of fact, I am going to buy this curved one here very soon just for that specific reason. So, you know, I guess enough of the babble talk. Let me... Just want to quick skim over that and give you some reasoning to the method of my madness here. So let me check out the chat boards here and then let's drop some powder uh, with the FX 120i. So we get some water here and uh, good old Drew Bradley is back in the reloading room and I know he said he was new. So I hope you're learning something there, Drew, and uh, glad to have you along. So Richie Gonzalez is saying, I, I mark my casings the same way during load development so I can see if there are any pressure signs, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, all right, so let's get this going. Uh, so 
I got this scale, really if it's any scale, regardless if it's like a Charge Master, a Hornady, um, this FX120i. Um, you got to make sure you let these warm up for a period of time, roughly 15 minutes before you consider to drop powder with these. Um, especially with these high-end uh, lab scales. Matter of fact, these lab scales are so sensitive. Matter of fact, I can't even blow on it or even wave my hand next to this because just the wind alone will usually get this to vary a little bit. So you got to be careful at least with any breeze, make sure there's no fans in the area blowing on your scale. It's really, really important to make sure that that doesn't happen, especially with these high-end uh, lab scales. So you can see that my pan weighs 800.22 grains. So I put that on the side just to keep a, an eye on for drifting. Um, so we got the app already loaded up here. So let me get this camera situated just right here so I can, you guys can see this powder dropping. And if you're not familiar with this particular powder drop, this does a mass powder drop with the, the main powder throw, and then it trickles off when it's short with the trickler. And this is all done automatically through this uh, FX120i V3 combination unit using this Bluetooth app. So let me get this out of the way so you guys can clearly see what's going on. So we are going to start out right out of the gate dropping powder for this uh, Hornady ELD bullets. So we need to start out at 40.5 grains of H4350. So I am going to, let me clip you guys out of here so you can clearly, at least for on this first one, to give you an idea what this clearly looks like. Let me clip you out. So I am going to put in my first target weight of 40.5. So let's enter 40.5. And when I hit this, this will automatically throw it with a mass bulk weight with the powder drop and then trickle it off with the trickler. So it's all situated. Make sure you guys can clearly see everything. So that looks good. All right, so let's drop some powder and grab my funnel here. Now, one thing you might want to do is gra definitely grab a flashlight to check the case mouth openings, make sure there's no stainless steel pins or maybe any, any type of dry media in there. Make sure your cases look nice and uh, cases are completely empty. You know, it's important to do this because I did when I was using stainless steel media, and it's another reason why I don't use media anymore, but I did catch one pin stuck in the case mouth openings that are notorious of doing that with 6.5 uh, flavored pills. So it's really important to make sure you check out those case mouth openings before you drop that powder. So let's start out with 40.5. So the second I hit this 40.5, you're gonna watch this drop and trickle off at 40.5. And this is usually accurate within 0 0.02 grains. So one spec of H4350 is right around point zero two grains maybe maybe about point zero three uh for one single spec and this the accuracy of this scale is within point zero two so if i'm shooting for 40.5 if it's within point zero two in theory this should be dropping within one spec of powder so um before we get this going i know some of you guys got some questions rolling here so greg scott saying beam scale Beam, analog beam scales are definitely great. My pin is just slow. I just, the reason why I don't use them, either I use a charge master, but I had two charge masters. I sold one and I got this FX120i and I'm so glad I did. It, not only does it drop insanely fast, but it's insanely accurate. So if you're going for the most, all, utmost precision, you're shooting super, super long distances, like a thousand yards plus, it might be something to look into, but with that said, you don't absolutely need this. But if you can afford it, keep in mind, this lab scale with the auto trickler is about a thousand bucks. I made a little over a thousand bucks once you figure in tax and shipping. So keep that in mind. Um, Drew's saying, yes, I am. I'm really enjoying this process. I, f I, I like feeling 
overwhelmed and with all the new process theories, math, et cetera, you know, and that's, that's, that's the thing, especially if you're new is you might have to watch this not once, not twice, maybe three times. Matter of fact, if you check out my playlist, I have a playlist there called the ultimate reloading playlist where I have literally dropped all of my knowledge over the years into that playlist. And the first nine parts of that playlist is specifically designed for the new reloader. And I've had numerous people message me in regards to, man, that helped me out so much. And I had to watch it numerous times. So you might want to consider doing that, uh, Drew. Um, so Reese Thomas was saying, I want to thank you for your series on the 6.5 Grendel single handily taught me how to reload and I've been getting great results so far by following your process. And I'm glad you're enjoying not only my videos, but you're enjoying your own adventure and your own process. And it really is all about starting your own journey and creating your own adventure in the uh, reloading world. So uh, Sig Sauer is rolling in saying hello from Germany. Uh, a few days I built an open trickler by Eric Higgins. That sounds really interesting. So thank you for sharing that information. So with that said, enough of the BS talk. Let's drop some powder. So I got 40.5 entered here. I'm going to tap this to set target. And you're going to watch this auto trickle off. So this should be within 0 0.02. I might have to tweak this out ever so slightly. And I can be careful not to even breathe or blow on this thing because it is seriously that accurate. Um, so it's a little bit over. I might have to tweak this out ever so slightly because I've yet to do that yet. Um, but let's try this again. So right there, right on the money. So we're at 40.5. So we're going to drop that. So in theory, that should be within one spec of powder. Let me make sure I clear off my workstation here. So i got to somewhat concentrate here, obviously, because I'm dro dropping powder. So 40.5, I'll drop that in my funnel. Kind of tap on the side of the funnel here for those that are new. Get that to drop the case. That's the first drop. So this should automatically throw the second I put the pan back on there. All right, so that's within 0 0.02 of 40.5. So I feel confident that's roughly about a speck of powder there. And that's more than acceptable, especially for an AR. And if you want, if you're really anal and you want to get it right at 40.5, you can actually manually trick off one spec to get that right at 40.5. But that's more than uh, sufficient for what we're doing here, at least what I'm doing. <laughs> So that one way overthrow, it's way too quick. So yeah, I might have to tweak this out just ever so slightly. But then again, I am dropping different powder weights here and I have this set up for 41.8 on the highest end. So it's, on these lower powder drops, it's probably gonna overthrow, underthrow a little bit. So yeah, 40.5. So I'm gonna, that's our third powder drop. All right, so that's it. For those three at 40.5, the next one here, if you remember, if you've been watching this from the beginning, so we got 40.5, and now we're up to 40.8 for the ELDs. So I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't auto throw, and I'm going to enter, carefully move this, 40.8. So double checking that the first three powder drops look consistent obviously you got powder in the casing so that looks good so i'm going to enter 40.8 and tap the set target so this will drop at 40.8 now so good old eagle eye shooting is rolling in he's saying what's up todd nice to have you along my good friend um jared bear tactical is in the house saying hello todd 
Uh, so six hour saying it's, it's the same system with the FX 20i scale and automatic trickler controlled by Raspberry. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, 40.8, that's right on the money, 40.8. So we are dropping the next three here. So I'm keeping an eye on that scale as I pull the pan off because I know that pan weighs 800.22 grains. So I'm keeping an eye on making sure it doesn't drift. So 40.8, like within roughly seven, eight seconds of dropping that, it's pretty insane. So 40.8, so like I said, one speck of powder of H4350 weighs roughly 0.02 to 0 0.03 grains. And I have confirmed that with numerous guys uh, that have much more higher resolution scales. And if that's the case, we're theory dropping within one spec of H4350. So that did overthrow a little bit. So like I said, with different powder drops, without reconfiguring everything, I will get some under overthrows on the lower spectrum of dropping powder because we're doing a wide spectrum of powder drops here. I got this more tweaked out for um, higher powder drops here. So we'll keep that in mind. So I think I'm gonna tweak this out ever so slightly. I'm gonna get this trickler to pitch up just ever so slightly. So I gotta screw this in just a little bit. So I notice these are over and under throwing a little bit, but that's just the name of the game when you're first starting out. All right, so that's 40.8 right on the money there. All right, so I'm checking out that all three are filled up. Now we're up to 41.1. So I'm going to stop this, put my pan back on. So we are up to 41.1. So I'm going to enter 41.1. We're doing 0 .0, uh, We're doing 0 0.3 grain increments here. So just double check 41.1. So Jerry Parker is rolling in the reload room saying, hello, everyone, hit that thumbs up. Yes, definitely hit that thumbs up if you're out there watching. I greatly appreciate that. It definitely helps out with the YouTube algorithms for sure. Um, so yeah, 41.1. I got to make sure I don't breathe on this thing. I got to speak out the side of my mouth. So that's right on the money. It's 41.1. Now, if you can't exactly afford something like this FX120i, uh, you could definitely get precision ammunition. In my opinion, a bare minimum you should use is a charge master. And I did keep one charge master over here. And if you want some good uh, tips uh, to get the most out of your charge master, matter of fact, check out that eagle eye shooting. He's in the chat boards here. He's got a really good good example of how to use a charge master and get the most out of it for precision reloads so check definitely check out that eagle eye shooting and his channel and his video list um if you're like my opinion you know charge masters you can usually get for about 300 on a good deal usually they're about 350 um so 41.1 so you you know these are dropping well under 10 seconds. That's pretty darn impressive. All right, so we're up to 41.4, so I'm gonna stop this. N noticing it's still 800.22, same weight of the scale. So we're gonna enter 41.4, so 41.4. Tap the set target. So Drew Bailey saying, I have tried to use your super chat. It isn't working. I've tried four times, brother. Huh. That's weird. Interesting. 
you might have to yeah i don't know that's you know super chats definitely help um you know if, if you could do it you can do it if you can't you can't it's uh not a big deal there my friend all right so we're going for 41.4 uh so that's within 0 0.02 so that looks really good but I definitely really appreciate those super chats. It helps push this content forward in the future. So, so we are almost done dropping powder for the ELDMs, 140 grain. All right, so right on the money, well, at least, like, seriously, you can't even breathe or blow on this thing. It's that sensitive. All right, so one more. All right, so I'm going to clip my uh, road off my hat here. And I'm going to put this on, and I'm going to have you hear what this trickler sounds like. It's pretty interesting. just like that my friends it's that quick and it's that accurate it's definitely a nice tool to have and your reloader i'm no no doubt about that all right, so that is all of the casings for the ELDMs. I'm checking out um, these uh, casings. And you can actually see the powder kind of increase. You know, obviously you're going low to high. You can actually see the powder increase. Obviously this one's higher than the low end. So if you're new, uh, definitely keep an eye on those powder levels and make sure they're consistent across the board. All right, so we're dropping powder here for the SMKs. We're starting out at 40.9. And so I'm gonna stop this. And we are going to enter 40.9 for the first powder drop for the SMKs. So 40.9 and increments of three up to 41.8. So here's 40.9, the first powder drop. So we're gonna enter. 40.9 and tap the set target. So Drew Bradley, thank you so much for your super chat. <laughs> it's glad you got that figured out. And he's saying thank you for your efforts to educate. And that's really what this is all about is protecting our rights by pushing this knowledge on to the next generation. And I'm glad you got that figured out. And I really appreciate your help. And I hope hoping you're learning something to boot. And Jer Bear Tactical is also rolling in with the super chat for one dollar. I greatly appreciate that. That is awesome. Uh, Richie Gonzalez saying, sorry if I missed it, but did you do a parts list on your 6.5 Creedmoor build? And I didn't do a parts lift because this is an upper and lower that uh, I got from PSA. I didn't build it. I just bought the upper and lower and put them together. That's literally all it was. Uh, I did pay for the lower, but the upper was sent to me from PSA. So I want to be crystal clear on that. Um, all right. So we're shooting for 40.9. We're within 0 0.02. So that looks good. So we're going to drop our first drop here, for at least for the SMKs. Keeping an eye on that drifting. That looks really good. So, yeah, you didn't miss anything, my friend. It's just I got an upper and lower, and I literally just put them together. And that's really the best way to buy uh, any type of firearms off of uh, PSA. Uh, rather than buying a complete uh, firearm, just buy the upper and lower. It's by far cheaper to buy the upper and lower separate and put it together. Uh, Michael D., my good friend Michael D., is rolling into the reload and saying, I am late to the party. <laughs> so 40.9 that looks good so one more drop here at 40.9 so we'll have nine more drops here so if you guys got any questions in regards to reloading especially in regards to the powder drops 
uh, let yourself be known in the chat box. Now, in my opinion, the absolute minimum I would recommend getting, even for the new reloader, is a charge master. I personally wouldn't get anything less. Uh, I know, yeah, you can get kits that have beam scales and all that. I personally would just part out your entire reloading list. Uh, matter of fact, if you check out the description box below, I have damn near a link for everything I use in my reloading room. Keep in mind, those are affiliate links. Uh, so if you're going to make that purchase anyway, it uh, costs nothing to you, but I do get a little bit of a kickback on that. It definitely helps support my channel. Um, but that list is down there for a reason, to show you what I use and to make it easy for you guys. Um, so if you're curious of what I use, check out that description box below. So 40.9, that looks good. So that's the third and final drop at 40.9. So we are on to 41.2. And I got every single one marked here. Every single piece is marked with its appropriate powder drop. So if you're curious, I got every single one marked. Now, if, you, if you're marking your brass and you screw up, you're like, oh man, that's not supposed to be 41.2, it's supposed to be 41.4. You can easily take that off your brass. Let me stop this here. Um, you could take this off your brass by using brake cleaner. So just get a rag, put a little non-chlorinated brake cleaner on that rag, and you could take that uh, marking off the brass and remark it once the brake cleaner dries. So um, I'm gonna double check something here. See, you, you gotta be careful not to even breathe around this thing. I was getting worried there that was drifting. I guess I was just breathing on it. So 80.22. That's what the pan weighs. So I'm just making sure this isn't drifting. So that still looks good. All right, so we got the first three drop there. We are up to 41.2. So let me enter 41.2, tap to set target. So Drew's asking, does that machine drop the charge have an auger inside, which, which allows a measurement of how much? So, um, let me unclip you here and I'll see if I can get you a little bit closer. So let me not breathe on this machine because it's so darn touchy. So, <laughs> so we were at 40.18, so within 0 0.02. Uh, but let me unclip you guys here and I'll get you a little bit I better idea of what's going on here with this FX120i with the auto trigger V3 combo unit. So this might be pretty hard to do. <laughs> so let me let me try my best to do this. Let me just clear this one powder drop. So 41.2, try my best to do this. I'll drop any powder all over the place. All right, let me try my best to do this, of course, live. Clip you guys out. Now what happens here is it recognizes that the pan weighs 800.22. Well, I put this pan on here and when it zeroes out, this auto throw, which is enabled, will kick in and will just automatically drop that. So when I put this on, what it does is this is the main powder throw and there's no auger in here, it's all done by gravity. And the powder cycles down a hole and into the cylinder here that you can adjust. And you adjust this, at least with no reducer on the trickler, within 1.7 grains of your target weight. So if my target weight is 41.2, I get this main throw to drop 1.7 grains below that. And then the trickler trickles off the remainder of the roughly 1.7 grains. So this does all the heavy duty lifting and the trickler does the fine detail. So hopefully that makes it, uh, hopefully that uh, makes that clear for you, Drew. <laughs> so, um, and I'm actually going to show you how to empty this and how that hole looks here in a little bit uh, once we get done with this powder drop and we see the bullets. Um, but we're going to, like I said, I got 41.2 entered on here. So when I put this pan on, you're going to watch this drop.
41.22 within 0 0.02 of my target weight, which is in essence one spec of H4350. So that looks really, really good. So let me pull this out here. So I'll make sure that you guys can see everything. You can see me. All right, it's back in action. So got one more at 41.2. So Drew saying, ah, I see. So it's just like a manual drop charger. Yes. And it's just got that belt on the side that drops it automatically for you. All right. So within 0 0.02, probably within seven seconds, which is insanely fast. So we got all the 41.2s done. And that's where this setup really, really shines. So let me stop this. And like I said, if you're just starting out, in my personal opinion, as an absolute minimum, I would at least get a Charge Master. Um, this is absolutely needed for pre precision, uh, but you want the best of the best, in my opinion. It's either get something like this FX120i or, or Sartorius. You could do that too if you want more resolution. But I think you can have too much resolution on your scale. And that's where this really shines that only uh, it has... 0 0.00 resolution you can get some scales like a satorius at 0 0.000 you know three zeros after the decimal point but you know if powder is only going to be like h4350 is actually a pretty large uh kernel or speck of powder um that weight is roughly 3.03 .03. you know bargain might be a little under 0 0.02 so you know, in my opinion, you can't have too much resolution. So keep that in mind, in my opinion. So I think this is probably the best. If you want the kind of the best of the best, in my opinion, especially how fast and accurate this thing is, uh, this is the way to go, in my opinion. But absolute minimum, I always suggest a Charge Master. So, all right. So we are up to 41.5 here, my friends, for the SMKs. So I'm going to enter in 41.5. Point five. So everything's set here. Tap to set target. Make sure I don't breathe on this lab scale so it's so darn sensitive. <laughs> um, so Drew's saying, I don't see a second stepper motor to adjust the amount of accepted charge when you adjust the measure on the tablet. So I, I would highly recommend checking out that playlist on the specific FX120i with a V3 auto trickler combo. Um, I go in really big detail on that in regards there is a manual slider on the back of the lab scale itself that can do even more fine adjustments for the trickler. So definitely check that out, Drew. It'll, it will help you out tremendously in regards to how to get this set up and get it tweaked out. Um, all right, so we're going to shoot for 41.5. Gotta make sure I don't breathe on this darn thing. Gosh, so sensitive. <laughs> All right, so then 0 0.02. So that looks really good. So 41.5. Let me just double check that. Forty-one point four eight. So that looks really good. Um, so Richie is saying, I have the charge master also after reprogramming it will throw charges under 10 seconds and also reduce overthrows. And that's exactly what I have on mine. Matter of fact, I even have a, uh, pen mod reducer insert that you can do for the charge master. Uh, and I have a video showing you how to use that pen mod insert too. So, uh, so 41.48, that's within 0 0.02. Still at 800.22 on the scale, pulling off the pan, so that looks really good.
All right, so within point, that's right on the money there. 41.5. So that's all the 41.5s. All right, so we are on to 41.8. So I'm going to stop this, put my pan on. So we're up to 41.8. All right, so tap to set target. So this is on the high side of the powder drop for the Sierra Match Kings. All right, so the stem that I have loaded up in this die right out of the gate, that's where this thing really shines with the Forcer Coax Press. I could just move, move it just like that. So I got everything set up, ready to rock and roll, and I have the stem in there already for the ELDs, the 140 grain ELDs specifically. Um, all right, so we're in 0 0.02, so that looks good. All right, okay. Move too fast. So you can see it's, I'm still fine with that. You can see it's not 2-2 anymore, it's 2-4. I'm gonna keep an eye on this. And we're only got two left here. I gotta make sure I don't breathe or touch this thing. So let me, I'm gonna stop this quick. I'm gonna just double check that this thing is or is not drifting. And this scale has been on for at least two hours. Let's double check this. I said you, you gotta be careful not to have any fans or even breathe on this thing because it's so darn sensitive. All right, so that looks good. So I'm gonna tap the set target. We got two more of these. All right, so 41.8 right on the money there. Last one. All right. Well, then point zero two, pretty much on the money there. So that looks good. So that's it. I'll give you guys a clear, live, no BS example of the FX 120i. So I'm going to stop this, the pan back on. So that looks really good. Double checking all my powder levels. Every single case has powder in it. Make sure you're double checking that before you see those bullets. It only takes one to miss with no powder, but yet a primer enough to push the bullet out of the casing and into the rifle's bore, followed up by a cartridge that does have powder in it to create a squib load and a really bad day. <laughs> so make sure you're double checking all those powder levels. All right. With that said, let's drop, uh, let's see some uh, pills here. Let me clean up my little messy reloading room here. I know some people think I'm pretty anal when it comes to my reloading room. <laughs> All right. So we are using the Forrester Coax Press. Now, what really shines about the Forrester Coax Press is it's very well known in the precision community for its free float nature. I'm actually going to grab a piece out of here out of my bad brass bin here. So like I think it's a 308. But just to give you an idea of the, how this free float nature works, if you're not familiar with this press, and how typically single stage presses are going to be more accurate in regards to a progressive press. And where this particular uh, press shines is, is its auto uh, free float nature. This shell plate will shift left to right, 
and the die is not exactly loose in the in the upper part of the press but it will tilt forwards and backwards the shell plate will slide left to right and those two working together greatly increases the concentricity of seating that bullet straight as an arrow into that brass as you're seating and it's really important that you're keeping an eye on that and you can get tools to verify the concentricity of the bullet being seated if, if you want to take it up to the next level it's just another thing you have to purchase and i highly suggest doing it if you're going for the most ultimate precision it just depends on what your goals are in your reloading adventure so just to give you an idea of how that works so i'm gonna carefully make enough room here move this brass over so i don't spill all this powder trust me i've done that before if you haven't spilt some powder in your reloading room at one point in your life um guess you're just not reloading <laughs> so let me get a little bit more clear picture here so you can see my beautiful face <laughs> um all right so when it comes to ar semi-automatic especially something with the p mag you know like an ar10 ar15 uh you're restricted to a maximum magazine length in regards to seating that bullet you know obviously we're doing an ar10 here with 6.5 creedmoor um i gotta make sure i don't drop these magazines all over my brass filled with powder <laughs> that would be bad but with an ar-15 you're restricted to maximum magazine length ar-10 is much bigger magazine here obviously you know 223 556 five, uh 6.5 grendel um 300 blackout this, on the other hand, it's things like 243, 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, 6 Creedmoor. Uh, what else? I mean, the, the list goes on and on in regards to like 260, what you can put in an AR-10. And you're restricted to maximum magazine length, which in this case is typically around 2.8 for an AR-10 style uh, firearm. So you can actually see on my information card here, I got a coal of 2.80. Now that's coal. What does coal stand for if you're absolutely new to the game? That stand, it's an acronym that stands for cartridge, cartridge overall length, coal. And about the longest I'm going to be able to seat that bullet out is at 2.80. And that's from the very base of the brass to the tip of the bullet. Now, You'll get a lot more accurate readings with something like a ballistic tip like this ELD match. But when it comes to things like ho hollow point boat tails that where the tip isn't exactly perfect. I mean, that's what it, boat tail hollow point. It literally has a hollow point, a hole drilled in the tip of the bullet. And they're notorious for not being accurate, especially something like an ELD that has a ballistic tip, you know, a very precise tip to the bullet itself and at least for a semi-automatic so especially like an ar-10 or an ar-15 you, you you're going to be restricted to maximum magazine length it's not like a bolt action where you can you can seat that bullet further out of the brass and lower that jump of the amount of the bullet jumps out of the brass goes through the uh, flies through the air on the free free bore and is accepted by the rifling's lands. And at least with the bolt action, you're definitely going to want to use something like a bullet comparator, but it's not so important with something like an AR semi-automatic. Um, I will still do it to make sure, sure that the bullet isn't touching the rifling's lands. With a semi-automatic or an AR, you got to make sure that that bullet is nowhere as close to touching the lands because the velocity is going to go sky high. But with a bolt action, especially when you can feel that resistance in the bolt handle as you close at home, if the bolt's already touching the lands, you can play around with those numbers a little bit. You can play around those jumps. And some firearms like Remington 700s or Weatherbees, they love a, a long jump. 
Um, usually they, they, when they bore out that chamber, they will usually bore them out with a, extreme jumps on them. Some bullets and bores don't like a lot, a lot of jump. They like a minimal jump. Some like to be touching lands. And if you want to get to the expert level, some will actually jam the bullet into the rifling's lands. If you've been watching this series from the beginning, you'll know we did a lot of bore scoping and I showed you those rifling lands. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about and haven't seen part one of this series, I'd highly recommend checking that out because we bore scoped that bore and I specifically showed you what the rifling lands are. And that's where the secant radius or the ogive of the bullet comes in contact with the rifling's lands. And, you know, if you're restricted to maximum magazine length, especially on a massively produced semi-automatic and AR, more times than not, you're, you're going to be fine not touching the rifling's lands because you're restricted to maximum magazine length. But it's still interesting to use these tools to get an idea of how much jump you are working with. And you can get metal mags, don't use a P mag maybe, and you can seat those bullets a little bit further out to get a little bit closer to touching those rifling's lands. And I'm gonna show you exactly what, well, not exactly actually, I, I'm gonna show you at least within close reason of how much of a jump we have. And the reason why I say that is, let me get my mouse here, bring up my pictures. When you're using this specific tool and it comes with what's called a modified case for those who are absolutely new to the game. And this modified case is great and it's convenient. In this modified case, the base of that brass has been drilled and tapped out so it can be screwed onto this tool and the problem is with this is this particular piece of brass this modified case that you purchase has its own particular headspace and that particular headspace at least using my bump gauges that reads with this particular modified case with my bump gauges it reads 1.545 now say for example you're reloading for a bolt action and you're fire forming at 1.545 and you're doing no headspace bump and you're resizing your brass at exactly 1.545 then this piece of brass will give you alter ultra accurate readings in regards to bullet jumps because this tool works off headspace where the uh, datum line of this piece of brass comes in contact with your rifle's chamber. And if you're resizing your brass and it's exactly at 545, which more times than not, it's not exactly that. If it's within reason, say like you're, you know, 546 or 544, then this piece is of brass, this modified case might be, might produce accurate readings for you. But in this regard, this is a semi-automatic with a rather generous uh, chamber. And our resized brass, this specific brass that I just filled up with powder, this brass here reads 549, four thousandths of an inch. This is the actual brass. This brass here is reading 549. If you've been watching this series which is four thousandths of an inch more than this modified case. So for a semi-automatic, if you're getting an, an idea of how much that bullet is jumping, that might be acceptable because it's most likely you're not going to be remotely close to the lands. But if, for it's, if it's for a bolt action, you might actually might want to make your own modified case where you physically take one of your fire pieces of brass, bump that, headspace back to wherever you want it to be if it's a bolt action you know very minimal to no headspace bump or maybe a thousandth of an inch or if it's an ar you three thousandths of an inch from fire form and take that piece of brass and get it tapped and tap and die that thing for your own modified case so your readings are accurate especially for a bolt action As a matter of fact you can actually send in one of your own pieces of brass to hornady they have directions on their website 
where you can take your fire foam brass, resize it, bump it wherever you want it to be for headspace. You can actually send that piece of brass to Hornady. They will make your own specific custom and tapped and dyed modified case based off your particular firearms headspace to get the most accurate ratings using those tools. So keep that in mind. But, you know, at least for a semi-automatic, more times than not, you're not going to be remotely close to touching the rifling's land. And these tools here, you can see that the bullet comparators that ride on the bullet's ogive, they use the same body that the headspace bushings use. So you literally just take this out and you put in that bullet comparator and that's how it works. Um, so let's see some bullets here and we're going to see how much bullet jump we're playing with roughly. So this particular ELD match, keep in mind, that was reading maximum seated ogive depth of 2.282. So ELD is 2.282. And then the SMKs was 2.288. So let's see some bullets. And then we're going to see how roughly how much of a bullet jump we're playing with. So I've been battling here for quite a bit. Let me uh, check out the chat boards here. All right. So I have the specific ELDM. 140 grain stem already in the die here. So I'm going to start with the ELD match bullets. So I'm going to get these out of the way. Get this box opened up. All right. Let me just quick check out the boards here. Um, so HB shoulder, uh, shoulder uh, three. That says, what light is on your coax? And matter of fact, if you check out my video list, about, I'm going to guess, five, probably more like eight videos ago. I actually just did a video on this uh, KM squared uh, light for the Forrester Coax Press. And it is hands down the best. I've tried other ones. They don't even come remotely close to this KM squared. Uh, and I liked it so much, I ended up getting the exact uh, KM squared, but for the Hornady Lock and Load Press, because it is so bright. I mean, like I said, I've tried the other ones. I'm not going to mention their names. But they are not even remotely close in regards to how bright they are. They are. And especially the adhesive on the, these KM squared uh, press lighting works awesome. Just check out that video list. I have a very descriptive video showing you where to get it, how to install it, and they are awesome. As a matter of fact, you check out the description uh, of this video. I actually have a link to both of these. So, um, so Thomas... Uh, is saying I can get Sierra Magic King bullets to jam on my 6.5 Cremor AR-10 because of the OGI. And, you know, if you have a, a massively produced, you know, I would say the PSA is a it's an inexpensive firearm. They want to make sure that that particular firearm could work for a wide array of factory ammunition. They want to make sure that regardless if you're using you know, 142 SMKs or 140 ELD match from Federal or whoever, American Eagle, uh, Nosler, they want to make sure that it will work on a wide array of factory ammunition, not reloads. And they'll get a generous chamber on there for that specific reason, for a couple of reasons, obviously for function and make sure it works for a wide array of factory ammunition, but for liability reasons. They want to make sure that if Joe Schmo buys some federal 6.5 Creedmoor factory ammunition and Joe Smith on the other side buys some nausea uh, factory ammunition, they, they want to make sure that that bullet's ogive is not anywhere near that rifling's land. And that's why they do that. But if you get a custom-made firearm, AR-10, uh, obviously they can chamber that to whatever you want and they can play around with those tolerances. As a matter of fact, my 6.5 Mega Ma 10 that has a Krieger barrel has ultra tight tolerance, which is way tighter than this specific massively produced PSA firearm. Uh, so that's why. All right. So let me 
I got to move this just a little bit. So I'm not tripping on myself here, spilling powder all over the place. So let's uh, see one of these bullets here. So I got, this isn't set. I've yet to set this. Um, so I'm going to grab my first one here. So 40.5, I'm going to grab one of these bullets. Uh, so I'm going to carefully put this on the S jaws of this Forrester Coax press. I'm trying to get this bullet as straight as possible. And I'm going to seat my first bullet here. So when I'm seating bullets, I don't ram this home. I do it nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow, and then a nice tug at the bottom. You make sure we get consistent seating results. Now, if you're checking out our info card here, my desired coal based off of cartridge overall length is 2.80. So we're gonna seat these bullets right at 2.80. Now, once we get that seated, we get all these seated, we're gonna check out the ogive measurement to see how much of a bullet jump this particular factory, uh, this uh, widely, uh, how do you say this? Uh, massively produced PSA uh, AR-10 has for a bullet jumps. Um, so let me measure this here first. I'm gonna get my anvil on here. So I've always said to get accurate readings, you should have an anvil, which is right here. Make sure anvil is on here. And like I've shown you guys previously, I always check to make sure that the calipers are reading true. So I got this one piece of brass. I know this one piece of brass is 1.750. I got my calipers zeroed out. So that's zeroed. And just making sure that these are reading true. So 1.751, let me make sure I zero this out correctly. So 1.750, so calipers are good. And we want a coal of 2.80. So we got to play around with this uh, seating stem a little bit. And we need to go 54 thousandths of an inch down to that 2.8 target for the cart cartridge overall length. So I'm going to screw this down. Somewhere's right around there. And this is where a micro seeder die really comes into play. But I tell you, I'm really impressed with these Hornady die so far. And for something you can get for roughly seven, I got this set seeder and sizing die for, I think it was 37 bucks. It's pretty affordable. So now we are down to 2.828. So about 28, 28 thousandths of an inch. And once we get this to that 2.8, we're going to set it and forget it, at least with the ELDs. Now, this seating stem, this particular seating stem, I'm going to bring up this picture again to refresh some of your memories. This seating stem that's in there right now is this seating stem. Um, it's specifically designed for, it looks just like this seating stem, but the concave angle or arch inside the seating stem is specifically designed for the 140 ELD match. So this seating stem inside of this seating die comes in contact with the bullet, something like this. But this is for more standard bullets. And this specific 397106 seating stem part number is in that sizing uh, seating die. Um, so once we get done with these ELD matches, I'm gonna take this one out and I'm gonna show you that and put it in the standard seating stem for the Sear Match Kings. So, um, all right, so just to double check, we are down to 2.814. So we're getting close. So we're gonna keep on going here. So something like that. I'm gonna feather, feather this out right at the very end, try and get this as close as possible to 2.8. So really close. So 2.806. So actually before I do this, being that these tips of the bullets are not always accurate, is I'm gonna grab another one here and see how that compares to that before I finalize. 
this seating depth. So nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow, nice tug at the bottom. So let's see how this one compares using cartridge overall length. So this one is 2.804. So I feel confident being that this one's a little less than this. I'm gonna go off this one ever so slightly. It's not gonna take much of a turn here to get this right at 2.80. Let's see how this works. Once I get this close, you see right there, I think I'm just gonna settle on that. And let's make sure that this clips into a PMAG just fine. We got ample clearance. So it does clear. So I'm gonna get this one done. I just snug at the bottom. And we're just gonna make sure that we're not gonna have any issues when we go out to the range and this clears the mag just perfect. It's gonna strip off just fine. So this is where you get your actual ammo box. Carefully move some of this stuff around without dropping powder all over the place. <laughs> so this looks really good. So I'm gonna put this first one here and this one here in my ammo box. And we officially finished our first couple pieces of actual reloaded ammunition. So grab another one. Slow, 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 nice tug at the bottom. And we're just not gonna do it on all of these, but just to give you an idea, this one's 806. So you could see that the bullets, I might actually have to go down just a little bit on this. I just wanna make sure I'm not having any issues. Double check this. So you can see that these bullet tips are not exactly perfect. So 804, I'm actually gonna hit up these other ones a couple times. We're gonna finish up this finalized seating depth. And this one's right on the money, 2.800. Now let me show you something here in regards to measuring off the bullet tips, which aren't exactly perfect. And I'm going to pull it in my bullet comparator here and we're gonna go off O-Jive. So this quick, quickly show you here, this one was 2.801. This one here, remember bullet tips are not always perfect these ballistic tips are a lot better than bolt tail hollow points. That one's right on the money. And this one I believe was four thousandths of an inch over that, which right there. So four thousandths of an inch difference between the two. But if I put in my bullet comparator where it rides off the bullets secant radius or the O-jive of the bullet. So I got my bullet comparator in here now. So I got to zero this out. So this is now zeroed. Now we're gonna measure off the bullet's secant radius where the radius of the bullet comes in contact with the firearm's lands. I'm gonna spin this ever so slightly to get an accurate reading. So that's 2.196. Let's see how close this other one is measuring off the bullet's secant radius. So I'm gonna spin this ever so slightly. So one nine seventh, so a thousandth of an inch difference. And one nine six, so a thousandth of an inch difference. So you can see measuring off the bullets, secant radius or the O jive is by far more accurate way of seeding those bullets, especially for a bolt action. You know, I'm not totally concerned with, like I said, with a, an AR because I'm, I'm restricted the maximum magazine length. But more times than not, those bolt actions will have much more generous, especially if it has a box style mag, you're not feeding them in single one by one, they have much more generous box magazines where you can usually extend that bullet out of the brass. You're sitting it further out of the brass. And more times than not with a bolt action, they're gonna give you the ability to at least touch the rifling's lands where the bullet's 
secant radius comes in contact with that rifling's lands. And that's where you're playing around with bullet jumps, my friends. So now that I have this particular seating die set for this coal, I'm now not going to touch it. Even though one might be four thousandths of an inch difference, remember the bullet tips are not always perfect. We're measure, if you were to measure off the secant radius using a bullet comparator, it's going to be pretty much spot on. So once you have this set, you want to set it and forget it. You don't want to keep on chasing that cartridge overall length if you're measuring off the bullet's tips because remember, the bullet tips are not perfect. So, so let's grab another piece here. And when I'm getting this bullet in here, I'm getting it as straight as I possibly can. And then let the die and this free float nature of this particular press do its work in regards to getting the concentricity of that seated bullet as straight as an arrow in regards to the bore's axis. So, so that looks good. So let me just double check some of your comments here. So Sean Thalker, he's saying, it's disappointing that Hornady doesn't give you all the seating stems when you buy the dies. I haven't bought those dies since I've had the problem with the 300 blackout dies. And it's a good point. And who knows, it might be a marketing gimmick just to buy an extra seating stem for that particular bullet, which you should have to do. But it was nice to open up that box and see that particular seating stem for more times than not, the 6.5 cream or mostly wide used bullet, which is the 140 grain flavor. You know, they do make 143, and I think there's a 147, and they have separate seating stems for each one, which is kind of ridiculous if you ask me, especially when these seating stems are roughly 12 to 15 bucks a crack. But then again, this die set was 37 bucks. I mean, it's a pretty inexpensive die set. And for me personally, across the board 223 308 now 6.5 i've had amazing results but i know some guys like my friend sean thalker he had terrible time in regards to his 300 blackout dies which i have yet to reload for um so it's just something that you're going to have to learn in regards to your own reloading journey so Jack Rock saying this is making me hungry. I know I'm hungry myself. Um, so Drew saying, have you ever loaded 10 rounds of precision rounds in the mag? Save the 10th round to measure the coal to see if the first nine pushed the others further from firing. I guess I'm not totally sure what you're asking, but if you're using these tools properly, and I could go in further detail on this, and I wish I could, otherwise this would be another hour long. Check out that description box for my ultimate reloading playlist. It's all my videos and all my knowledge dropped into there. And the first nine parts is geared more towards the new reloader. And in the area of that nine part playlist, uh, there is a section in there for seeding the bullets. And I go over all that information. So I definitely check that out. Um, so Vanessa Kitty is rolling in the house here. So let's keep on going here. So carefully removing these so I don't spill any powder. Let's finish off these ELDs so we can move on to the Sear Match Kings. So nice tug. And we're moving this right into the ammo box. And we're keeping those same powder drops in line. So we're not mixing these up. And so far I've had this Forcer Coex Press for a few months now, and I've reloaded quite a few rounds off of it already. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty darn impressed with it so far. It's an amazing press. Uh, these you usually can get these Forcer Coex Press from Shields. It's probably the best place to get it, most readable, readily available place to get it is Shields online. Have it shipped to your house. And I believe last time I checked, they were 350 bucks, so 349 or something. All right, so that's 41.1. All right, so nice tug at the bottom. It's really important to get that nice tug at the bottom so you're getting consistent seating depths. You know, if you, I said this before, regardless if it's resizing for headspace or seating bullets, you got to consistently run that press 
the same on every single press stroke of that handle. So I'm making sure that that bullet is straight as I possibly can get it and let the free float nature of this press do the rest of the work here. All right, two more for the ELDs. And I'm checking these bullets, making sure there's no ring around the copper jacket. Uh, that may be issues with that particular seating stem, not liking that particular bullet's O-jive or secant radius. That's something you definitely want to keep an eye on in regards to seating those bullets. So we are done for the ELDs. That looks really good. So we are officially done for the ELD match. All right. So we are on to the Sierra Match Kings here. So we're switching gears for a different bullet or pill flavor. And that's a 142 grain boat tail hollow point. So I need to take out the stem. I'm purposely gonna back this stem off a good amount, something like that. Pulling this out, and this is where this Forrester Coax press really shines. This thing just slides right out. And <laughs> it's that awesome. So I, I'm gonna get you guys a little bit up close and personal, especially for those that are absolutely new. So we're gonna back this off. So carefully remove the top part here. And we're gonna remove the specific 140 grain ELDM stem out of this. And there it is. So you can see it's the specific 397, on which this won't zoom in or focus during a live feed, but this is a specific 397106 stem for the specific 140 grain ELD mass. So I'm going to grab the other one here that has no markings and we're going to put that in this die and reinsert this. Get my cheesy rubber washer. There's one thing I don't like about horn the seating dies is a stupid rubber washer. They really got to improve that. All right, so I'm purposely gonna back this off, make sure we don't overshoot. A little tension on this, and this is why I don't like these rubber rings, is they, they smush out, I don't know. They, they gotta redesign that rubber ring, in my opinion, but that puts a little tension on this. So we've got the other stem in here now, so get you a little bit closer for the force or coax press, and this just slides right in, man, it's like butter. And that's it. <clears throat> All right, I got to move these legs here a little bit. All right. Uh, so Drew's saying, sorry, I don't mean to mess up your friend. <laughs> I just get excited sometimes. All right. Big Joe is rolling in the house. Uh, nice to have you along, my friend. Uh, all right, so let's move on to the SMKs. So I'm carefully going to get my first piece here and these all have powder in them and we're shooting for a coal same coal of 2.80 so zero out the calipers and I can already tell we got a ways to go but we got to have a start starting point somewhere well, we got a long ways to go there for 2.80. So, slowly, slowly, slowly tug at the bottom. All right, so we're at 2844. So we got, whoa, let's drop the calipers. Like I said, that's where a micro cedar die really comes into play. So you have to keep on playing around this and get it pretty close right out of the gate. So we're at eight to four. Uh, at the very tail end, I'm going to start feathering this out. All right. So we're getting close. So we're at 
807. Now remember, these are the very inconsistent boat tail hollow point. These tips are much more inaccurate than those Blissa tip ELD match. So what I'm going to do before I finalize this, I'm going to see one more here. We're going to compare it. See if this one, based off cartridge overall length, is over or under. So nice and slow, consistent, consistent tug at the bottom. So this is the same, 280. So we're going to screw this down, get this remotely close to 2.80. And we're right there at 280. So let's check out this other one. And right on the money. Doesn't get any better than that. So let's uh, try one more here. We should be able to finalize this seating depth for the 142 grain Boatail hollow points. Slow, slow, slow tug. And wow, these tips are actually very consistent. So I was actually amazed with that. So damn near the cartridge overall length is very consistent across the board. So I got this zeroed out. Let's put in our old jive comparator, bullet comparator, and we'll measure off old jive and see how consistent these are. For the O-Jive. So we got this zeroed out. So let's measure three of these and see how consistent measuring off the bullet's O-Jive is. So 2 2.196. So you can see I'm carefully spinning this make sure it seats just right and it's exactly the same 2.197 and especially for a bolt action and repeatability in regards to seating your bullets especially for a bolt action you should always be using a bullet comparator like this and measuring off the ogive not the bullet tips so that is looking really good i'm gonna double check that this clips into a mag we got clearance i'm going to get two of these make sure two of them in a row clears and that looks good and carefully strip these off not to ruin the concentricity of that particular reloaded round make sure the numbers are all facing me so that looks good and we're going to finish off these other nine and then we're going to double check and get an idea of how much bullet jump we are working with at least for this particular PSA, 6.5 Creedmoor AR. So 41.2. Get as straight as possible. And these were this, with a specific force or coax press, these easy access linkages really come into play. I got all this real estate here with these open linkages, and these are a modification to this particular press in comparison to using the standard straight brackets that came with this press. So I have a video in my video list on those specific linkages if you're interested in getting this press. All right, we're getting to the tail end here. Six more. Get this bullet straight as I possibly can by hand. And with a human eye, let the free float nature of this press do its work. Man, those S jaws on this press is so nice. You can just feel it grip right on that brass and just, it, you can literally feel it move that piece of brass over so it's in line. And it's awesome. I mean, it's just impressive. 
and I'm checking out those seated bullets, making sure there's no ring forming on the copper jacket. And there is no ring on there using that specific stem. And I'm feeling the neck tension too, is as I'm seating that bullet, I feel a good amount of neck tension. It might be something you might wanna Google on bullet neck tension. And um, playing around with neck tension if you want. Uh, more of an advanced reloading aspect. Um, but I'm making sure there's good solid neck tension. Now, I don't crimp my rounds, regardless if it's semi-automatic or bolt action. I don't crimp. Uh, I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds and never had an issue as long as you have good solid neck tension. So keep that in mind. And that's it. And there you go, my friends. The start of this load development. Now, you're just not going to know if your firearm likes to shoot these particular bullets. Every firearm is has their own bore. Every firearm has its own ruffling. Every firearm has its own particular chamber that's just like a human's fingerprint. And you're not going to know if that particular firearms bore likes to shoot that particular bullet until you just get that pill down that rifle's bore. And you do that low development. And there's numerous ways of doing low development. Uh, whether it's optimal charge weights like this or a ladder test, or you can even use a chronograph and within just a few rounds looking, looking for um, accurate uh, velocity nodes and where they flatline in regards to the velocity if you're using a chronograph. And that's just another aspect of how far you want to take it. You know, for me, I'm just a weekend warrior. I just like to go out and have fun. I, I take it a little extreme just to show you guys to pass on that knowledge. You know, if you're doing bench rest rifle shooting, F class or PRS, you're definitely going to want to do those things in regards to chronographing and doing low development, playing with those different aspects of trying to figure out your, your barrel's harmonics and what shoots best and what that particular firearms bore likes to eat in regards to a particular bullet. And you're just not going to know until you test it. And I've literally seen through low development, shoot one bullet and group two minutes of angle and shoot a completely different bullet. And it's half minute of angle and consistently repeat those groups. And it's amazing. And if you're new and you're getting into reloading, it's really exciting. And I think it's something that if you're ready to jump down this rabbit hole, you're going to get hooked. Trust me. Um, all right. So let's clean this up here. Um, that's it. We're finalized. I got my info card here. Now let's check out the bullet jump, what we have based on bullet jump. Now, remember, if you go back, maximum seated depth for the SMKs was 2.288. So let's measure based off cartridge overall length, what let me get my charger plugged in here so I don't run out of juice. Uh, let's check out the SMKs and let's write this down. And we're going to get an idea of how much these bullets are jumping out of the brass through the free, blower, free, free bore before the bullet's secant radius touches the rifling's lands. Now I'm going to grab just one miscellaneous piece here. We already got our bullet comparator in here. This is zeroed out. And this measures... Like you just seen before, let's say 2.197. So 2.197. Okay. And we're going to get an idea of how much bolt jump we got here. And this was 195. So let's write that down. Um, oh, geez, I wrote down the wrong one here. Gotta pay attention, Todd. 
So these are the ELDs. Gosh, got to pay attention. So 196. So let's just say 196. So 2.196 for the ELDs. Let's grab the SMK again. Just to double check. So 197. 2.197 for the SMKs. So there's our bullet differences there. All right. Let's make this easy for you guys. All right. So let's start out with the SMKs here. So for the SMKs, maximum O drive was 2.288. Minus 2.197 for a bullet jump of 0.91. So I'm going to write that down. And let's go over to the ELDs. So the maximum was 2.282. And the seated magazine length was 2.2. One nine six for a bullet jump of point zero eight six. Let's like let me just double check that. Sorry, I got that other one wrong here. All right, so the SMKs have 0 0.091. Let me get that bigger so you guys can read it because this thing won't autofocus. So 0 0.091, and the ELDs have a jump of roughly 0 0.086. Now keep in mind, using this particular modified case, it has a four thousandths of an inch difference on the purchase modified case in comparison to the actual bumped headspace on our reloaded ammunition. So keep that in mind. But this will give us a solid idea of how much bullet jump there is. Now, you know, keep in mind one eighth, an eighth of an inch. If I take eight divided by one divided by eight or eighth of an inch, that is point. One, two, five. So this isn't jumping a full eighth of an inch, but pretty darn close. You know, if I take a sixteenth of an inch, I think some of you guys are familiar with that. One divided by 16, that would be 0 0.0625. So this is jumping roughly between a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch out of the brass, flying through the air of the freebore, until the secant radius of that bullet touches the rifling's lands. And that's how it works, my friends. So, well, if you got any questions, let yourself be known. Otherwise, this will conclude the reloading part. I still got to empty this. I'm going to show that to some of you guys. And Thor's axe is rolling into the reload room saying, hey, Todd, missed most of this, but you can always go back and start from the beginning. And Cam Cam 413 is dropping down the super chat He's saying thanks for the sharing the Sunday knowledge and thank you so much for that super chat helps out more than you know. Thor's saying reloading is a huge world to step into and if you are new, this is where you start your own adventure. Big Joe is saying my 6.5 is like that loves 140s but doesn't like 123s and 130s and that's where particularly your, your firearms twist rate. And if you're not familiar what twist rate is, for say, for example, if you have a firearm with a one and eight twist, that bullet is going to make one full revolution, one full revolution in eight inches. If it's a one and nine twist, it makes one full revolution in nine inches. If it's a one and 10, it makes one full revolution in 10 inches. One and 12, it makes one full revolution in one foot. So the higher the number, actually, the slower the twist rate because if it's a 1 in 12, it takes 12 inches to make one full revolution. If it's a 1 in 8, it only takes 8 inches or it's a faster twist rate. And more times than not, 
faster twist rates, the lower the number, for example, one and eight, one full revolution and eight inches of barrel, tendency have, usually have a tendency to like heavier bullets. Lighter twist rates, like a one and 12, especially something like a five, five, six, uh, AR-16, you know, it's gonna make one full revolution and 12 inches of barrel. And it'll just like a completely lighter bullet more times than not. Now that is heavily dependent on the firearm's barrel length. I have a 10 and a half inch 5.56 AR pistol that has a one and seven twist. And you would think that particular firearm would enjoy heavy, heavy bullets. Something like a 75 grain or 68 grain boat tail hollow point. But that wasn't the case because of its short barrel. Remember, it's a 10 and a half inch AR pistol with a 10 and a half inch barrel with a one and seven twist. That means if it has a 10 and a half inch barrel and it's making one full revolution at seven inches, it only has roughly three and a half inches left to make a partial revolution. And that particular firearm actually enjoyed a lighter bullet, a 55 grain. Matter of fact, the 55 grain, a particular 10 and a half inch AR 556 destroyed. When I say destroyed, it destroyed the heavier bullets. So you need to keep an eye on no, not only that particular firearms twist rate, but the barrel length is heavily dependent on how fast it can stabilize that bullet before that bullet exits the muzzle and starts its journey, its arc radius and down to your target. Um, so let's get this uh, FX120i emptied. I'm gonna quick show you how that's done. And usually what I do to get this accomplished is you can actually turn this, you can turn this upper part of the hopper. There's a zero here. Let me clip you guys out. So there is a zero or an O, and there is an X right here to close it off. So you see the X, you see the O. So let me clip you guys back in the tripod here, the charger back on so I don't run out of juice. So what I'm gonna do is turn this to the X so it closes off the hopper. So powder can no longer go down the hole and down into the cylinder that's adjustable. So if I want more powder in the cylinder, I lefty loosey screw this out. If I want less powder in the cylinder, I screw it in righty tighty. And that's how this works. But there's powder still in the cylinder, but I've now closed it off. It can no longer receive more powder, but there's still powder I need to get out of this hopper. So in order to do that, there is a cycle button on this and I'm gonna show that to you here too. So let me clip you out. There is a cycle auto throw button here. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna watch this. I'm gonna hit this cycle auto throw and I'm gonna get the powder to empty out of this cylinder. So I'm gonna hit cycle auto throw. I'm gonna keep on doing this until it stops. So I'll just keep on pressing the button until it stops and there it pretty much stops right there. So you can see no more powder is coming out of that auto throw. So I feel confident that that is now out of powder. So I'm gonna clip you back in because I was like, <laughs> I gotta have two hands here. So I'm gonna take this and I am going to drop this back into the hopper. Now I feel very confident, let me grab my powder jar here. Now I can just take this right out of the unit. Now remember, I got this closed off so it shouldn't spill powder anywhere. Thank God during a live event. <laughs> so here is the hopper, it's closed off. So I'm gonna empty this back in my jar. I give this a tap a little bit. And now I'm gonna put this back in. Now I'm gonna open it back up. So it's open and I'm gonna to continue to hit that cycle auto throw. 
So you can see a little bit more powder just dropped out of there. And I'm gonna keep on doing this till it stops. I'm gonna grab my brush. I'm gonna brush this out, make sure there's absolutely no powder left in this. Cycle auto throw, keep on doing it until I'm confident there's no more powder left in the cylinder. And I'm gonna take this and drop this in back into the jar. Now I got to empty the powder out of the trickler. So there's still powder in this trickler here. So the way to do that is very careful. <laughs> you gotta carefully do this. So I'm gonna try and do this live with the camera in front of me. So I'm gonna carefully pick this up, pull it out with the trickle tube pointing up. I'm going to carefully dump this back in with a camera in front of me. <laughs> you see, I got the trickler tube facing up. So now that is empty. Now I'm gonna carefully move the trickle tube forward, drop it out that way. So there's just a little bit left back in here. And it's just a little bit in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I can manually start this trickler up. So I'm gonna hit start motor. Make sure there's no powder left in the trickle tube. Stop motor. And there's a little bit of powder still left in there. And now it is completely empty, my friends. I've successfully emptied all the powder out of the FX120i auto trickler V3 com combo. We are officially done. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this live reloading series, of the 6.5 Creed mower. Thor's Axe to St. Todd. I know if I have to ask, I can't afford it. However, what would a rig like that cost? And this specific FX120i, which I got from Data Weighing Systems, I have a full playlist on this from opening that box, initial setup, my mods and settings check out that playlist i have that in there if you are interested in but this they don't give these away no joke these are a little over a thousand bucks for this whole entire setup but if you want the absolute fastest most accurate in my opinion that would be this and in my opinion i think this is way better than the rcbs matchmaster in my opinion it's not only faster i i I've never used it before, but I'm getting this information from friends that I trust and my mentors. And they say, by far, this system is better than a Matchmaster. Everyone's got a different opinion. That's just mine. Um, so Drew's saying, ah, there's a second motor for the fine adjustment in the trickler. I am now smarter. 100% makes sense now. Um, otherwise, that's it. And we are officially done. And the next part of the series won't be live. It'll be me out the range shooting this very reloaded ammunition to see how accurate it is. And we just won't know. Like I said, your rifle's bore is like a fingerprint and every single one is different. And more times than not, with more inexpensive firearms where the rifling process has been done by a button pulled uh, way of doing rifling and not a rifle cut method of doing rifling like a Bartling or Krieger. Usually I like to see, uh, depending on how the performance is right out of the gate, if it's subpar or so-so, you might want to get about 100 rounds, maybe 200 rounds down that firearms tube before you start doing low development. If the accuracy is insane and is very promising right out of the gate, you still might want to do maybe 20, 40 rounds on that firearms too before you do low development and then proceed with powder drops, bullet jumps, you name it. There's multiple ways of playing around with your barrel harmonics, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this series. Jerry Parker saying, great demonstration. Lakeview Outdoors saying, hello, everyone. If you're just joining this, we're wrapping this up, but you can definitely start over from the beginning once this live series is done. Cam Cam 413 saying, thanks, Todd. And I hope you guys enjoyed this live reloading adventure start to finish in the last, what? What are we up to? I can't even remember. 
<laughs> I don't know. I, we're up part six, obviously. So last five parts of the series. If you are new, you just got that 6.5 Creed more. Hopefully we can learn together and hopefully you pass this knowledge on to the next generation. That's how we are going to protect our rights and move this forward into the future. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. I hope you enjoy my videos. And if you do, scratch my back and I'll continue to scratch your back with not only subscribe, like, and share. Hit that notification bell. When you do hit notification, make sure you hit notification all. If you are not getting those notifications, you might want to unnotify and re-notify with a notification all so you get those notifications. So when I go live or those edited videos are uploaded, you get those notifications because I know some of you guys aren't. <laughs> and so whatever, it's going behind the scenes there at the good old YT while you're not getting those, but whatever. Um, become a Patreon. It really does help. Check out the description box below for my affiliate links for what I use. And also check out that apparel that is now on Teespring for Elster's Rifles and Reloadings. You name it, stickers, mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, and even sexy spandex leggings. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video.